Data science and AI skills are in high demand and that is showing no signs of slowing. Take a look at the World Economic Forum's recent jobs report. It shows these fields and skills to be the most in demand going forward, forecasting millions of new roles globally over the next few years. Now is most definitely the time to future-proof your career with these skills. My name is Andrew Jones. I'm a former Amazon and Sony PlayStation data scientist. I run a leading global data science education program. I've got five patents in the field of machine learning. I've written a book all around the data science and AI hiring process and of one of the largest data science networks online. So if I were to lose all of that, how would I start again? What would I focus my time on in order to move quickly towards success, both in terms of learning and also landing a role? Before we jump into any of the required skills or tools, we firstly need to think like a data scientist or analyst, we need to not base this on opinion. We need to follow the data. And luckily for us, I've got a secret weapon here as part of my research for my education program, my book, and for this video, I have an ongoing dialogue with over 200 hiring managers, recruiters, and leaders in the field. So you can trust that what we cover here today is truly evidence-based. Let's take a look. The first skill or tool that I would learn is SQL. Why do I say that? Well, from my panel of leaders and hiring managers that I've spoken to, in the most recent data, it shows that 97% of them said that their team was relying on this tool. Now, the great thing about SQL is that not only is it super powerful and widely used, it's actually nice and easy to learn. Here's the three week roadmap that I would focus on to quickly get up to speed. So here we're starting at the foundations and then quickly building up to knowing almost everything required to solve about 95% of tasks that we'll be doing as a data scientist or analyst. Week one is all about the foundation of selecting and filtering data with some extra learning around aggregation. Week two builds on this, looking at how to deal with multiple data sources, so joining and stacking data. Then week three looks at manipulation of data, so concepts like window functions, which is so, so powerful, and then selecting random samples, working with dates and text data. SQL is also very common in the interview process, so if I'm starting from scratch and I want to land a role, I'm definitely going to need this skill. Okay, so the next step is to build on this, and I'm going to learn Python. There are a couple of alternative languages here, but based on the most recent data from hiring managers, Python is still the way to go, as 87% said that their teams were using this language versus around only 55% for the next most common, which was R. If I'm learning Python from scratch, I'm gonna focus on these seven key things. Firstly, base Python, so the building blocks of how the language works. Next would be Pandas, a library for data manipulation, something that data scientists and analysts do each and every day. I'd learn NumPy for its fast mathematical processing and for its use with image data. I'd learn SciPy, which contains a ton of amazing functionality, but I would just be focusing on using it for hypothesis testing to start with. Without a doubt, I would want a data visualization library, and although there are some really great alternatives like Seaborn and Plotly, I would go with the most commonly used and most commonly asked for by hiring managers, and that is Matplotlib. I would then make sure that I was comfortable with scikit-learn for machine learning, as well as all of the pre-processing steps that are required for it. And then a bonus library, and that is Streamlit. This library is perfect for not only bringing my learning journey to life, it can help me showcase my projects when applying for roles. Machine learning is still a really big part of data science, so learning how to apply the commonly used algorithms is important. However, I'm not gonna make the mistake of trying to learn them all. I'm gonna focus my learning on the algorithms that teams are actually using to solve problems and add value in the real world. For this, let's break it into three areas, supervised learning, unsupervised learning, and then some bonus algorithms that will get me ahead of the competition in the hiring process. For supervised learning, based on the data from hiring managers, I'm gonna focus on understanding these five algorithms here. Each of these five are extremely powerful and are often suited to different problems or different needs that the business has. For unsupervised learning, I'm gonna focus on learning these two algorithms here. So firstly, K-means, which is often used for clustering and creating things like customer segmentations, something very powerful and very common in the field. And then principal component analysis or PCA, which is what is known as a dimensionality reduction technique and can be very good to know. Now to the bonus algorithms. I'm gonna get familiar with association rule learning. This is an approach that discovers the strength of relationships between different data points. So a common use case would be to understand which products are frequently purchased together in the same way that you might see something like customers who purchased product X are also likely to purchase product Y on sites like Amazon. 
The other bonus algorithm is causal impact analysis, which sits in the realms of time series analysis. This approach measures the change in a metric after some event has taken place. This could be the uplift in sales after a promotion, the additional clicks, conversions, or signups generated by an online ad campaign, or it could be the change in share price after a market event. A very important concept and one that has a huge amount of selling power with hiring managers because it helps them answer the types of questions that their bosses are asking them all the time. Now, in terms of deep learning, this isn't essential when you first start your journey, but it is extremely powerful when looking to grow your career. When the time comes for that, my recommendation would be to learn either Keras or PyTorch. All right, next, if I'm starting from scratch, I'm gonna need to build up some knowledge around math and statistics, because without that, I'm gonna be a little bit stuck. Now, while there is a lot of talk online about how much math a data scientist or analyst or AI practitioner needs to know, let's cover the concepts that our panel of hiring managers and recruiters place the most emphasis on. Firstly, the basics around the types of data that I'll be working on, and more importantly, why each might need to be treated differently. I would learn about distribution, so the different types, and then what makes them up, so things like standard deviation and z-scores. Next, I would build up my knowledge around hypothesis tests, again, the different types and how they work, as well as the fundamental thing that drives them, the infamous p-value. From there, sampling techniques in the central limit theorem, and then it would be confidence intervals because they're just so powerful and are used all the time in the field. The other topic that I will eventually want to learn about here is some basic linear algebra, but I'm gonna avoid textbooks to start with here, and I'm gonna learn about these concepts as I start applying things like the machine learning algorithms that we just spoke about, where it's not theoretical, it's instead being put into action. Now, one last quick note on this topic. Don't be scared away by math, in my experience, anybody and everybody can learn it. You just need the right teaching resources, ones that focus heavily on intuition and understanding. The key to my learning journey is not just gonna be staring at tutorials or pages of a textbook. It's gonna be applying what I'm learning through projects. Not only will this help the information sink in, it will help me showcase the skills that I have and the value I bring come interview time. The projects you build can range from very small ones, such as coding up a number guessing game without any Python libraries, or creating code that finds all prime numbers up to a million, all the way through to very big ones, such as the application of machine learning algorithms to solve a particular problem. When looking to make my project stand out from the competition, meaning I get more interviews and have more success in those interviews, I'm gonna do two things. Firstly, I'm gonna make sure that I have a varied portfolio, so not just one long capstone project, and also not just in one area. So I don't wanna have all machine learning based projects. I wanna have something showcasing those skills, but also a project showing my abilities with hypothesis testing or data visualization or time series analysis. Secondly, I'm gonna to need to make my projects very easy for the reader, so the hiring manager or the recruiter to digest, and very easy for them to quickly see the value that I bring. The best way for me to do this is using a layout such as this one here. We can see that the project write-up will start not with code or complexity, but with an overview, so the key highlights of everything that is to follow. It will speak to the data and any preparation that was required, then an overview of what concepts or algorithms are being utilized. This shows that I actually understand what I'm using and applying. From there, I'll dive into the meat, the actual actions I took to solve the problem, broken up into key stages. To wrap up my project write-up, I will include a discussion around the results or the impact or the outcome of the work that I've done. And then something almost nobody does, some notes around growth or next steps. Perhaps what else I'd like to have tested from this point onward or some thoughts as to what other data could be required to enhance this project further. This final section shows that I don't just do the work, it shows that I think about how to improve it, it shows that I'm always looking to grow as a data scientist or analyst. And these are the most appealing attributes that I can exhibit as a candidate, so this will help me land my first role quickly. So back to the data that I collected from the 200 hiring managers, recruiters, and leaders in the field. Two more tools are coming up all the time, so I'm gonna make sure that I get to grips with them. The first is Tableau, a tool used for creating dashboards and data visualizations. When learning Tableau, I need to get confident with importing data and understanding data roles, customization using what is known as the marks card, creating and applying filters, custom logic using calculated fields, and level of detail or LOD expressions. Now, as a very quick note, Power BI is a very good option to learn here too, but is less in demand when it comes to hiring managers' needs in the market. 
The other tool that I'm gonna to need to get comfortable with is GitHub. GitHub is what is known as a version control system. In simple terms, this is just a system that stores a log of changes to files or code, meaning we can always have a record of changes that we've made over time, and we can roll back to a previous version if, for example, something goes wrong. It also allows data professionals to work collaboratively on projects, a very, very important part of the job. Now, according to the data that I've collected, there are five key things I'm gonna to need to know and be comfortable with in GitHub. Repositories, branches, pull requests, merges, and pulling and pushing between GitHub and a local machine. GitHub is so often seen as a complex tool to learn, but if taught well, you can pick this up quickly and easily. There is a huge amount that can be done within GitHub, but the five areas on screen here are what I need to focus on understanding first to land a role in this field. There is no right or wrong way to learn the skills for a career in data science, analytics, and AI. You can learn for free using some incredible resources that are available. You can undertake a degree or a master's from many institutions all around the world. But if it's me and I'm starting from scratch based on everything I've seen to date, the fastest and most effective way is an option that sits in the middle, and that is to join a high quality learning program or course. With this, you're gonna know exactly what you need to focus on and everything that you need to learn is gonna be in one place. Rather than being spread across different platforms and instructors, all with different teaching styles and production quality. And if it's a good program, you're going to get dedicated one-to-one -one support with your learning and also with navigating the hiring process. This is so much more valuable than you might think. If it takes you 18 months of struggle to move into a role using a variety of free content, but only six months because you joined a good course, that's a difference of 12 months, or in other words, that's an entire year's salary of, let's say, $80,000. If you only paid a couple of thousand dollars to join that course, that's a pretty great return on investment. In saying this, when it does come to courses, you do have to be extremely careful that you're picking the right one for you. Important questions to ask are, does the result that I want sync with what the course offers? Is there evidence that other students have attained the results that I want? Has the instructor got the relevant credentials? And if the course is offering support with landing a role, does the instructor have a significant volume of experience with this in the real world? Will the instructor offer dedicated one-to-one -one guidance so I can ensure that I keep momentum and accountability? Is the curriculum based on any evidence of what is truly in demand? and that will tick the right boxes come interview time. Is access to the content and support unlimited or do I get cut off at some point? If you can find a course that offers what you need, then don't be afraid to invest in yourself. It can make the learning journey so much more enjoyable and so much more fruitful. But whatever avenue of learning you choose, just make sure you keep up some consistency. Even if you're only able to allocate one hour per week, make sure you do that every week to maintain momentum and to keep concepts fresh in your mind. If you do that, I believe that absolutely anybody from any background of any age can become an incredible data professional. So I wish you all the best for your endeavor. It's a fantastic goal to have, and I know that you'll be brilliant. So that was a very quick overview of how I would start my career again, based on everything that I've learned getting to where I am today, as well as data collected from hiring managers and recruiters all around the world. If this is your goal to move into the exciting fields of data science, analytics, and AI, then check the resource linked below this video. It's a completely free session. We're just gonna go into much more detail on each of the key topics we've covered here, as well as tips for learning to code, ways to optimize your resume to get more interviews, what projects you should build to stand out above the competition, the impact of artificial intelligence on the market right now, how to accelerate your career once you land your first role, and much, much more. Like I say, I'll put a link to that below. Thanks for watching. I will see you next time.